Hello everyone, I'm Yuan Yuan from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. I will introduce you our work, Automated Cell Channel Analysis of Media Software with Manifold Learning. This work is done with Qipang and my supervisor Shui Wang. In this work, we focus on cell channel analysis of media software and the privacy of media inputs of users. For example, images, audios, and text. In our threat model, we consider a standard trace-based attack and we analyze software executables. We assume that cell channel traces can be logged using off-the-shelf methods like standard prime and probe. Our framework can reconstruct private media inputs from cell channel traces and localize cell channel leaks in the program. We further propose a lightweight but highly effective mitigation scheme called perception blending to defend our attack. This presentation is organized as follows. We first briefly introduce the concept of manifold and discuss why it can be utilized for cell channel analysis. We then show our methods for reconstruction, localization, and mitigation, and present some experimental results. First things first, what is manifold? To be short, it is a concept for dimension reduction. Let's say an image of digital one. This image has only one color channel and its size is 30 times 30. So it has in total 900 pixels and each pixel value ranges from 0 to 255. In other words, this image is represented as a 900 dimension vector in the pixel space. Of course, there are too many dimensions. Now let's take a closer look at this image. Here I display its pixel values. It's clear to see that in the 900 dimensional pixel space, not all images are meaningful. Because randomly sampling pixel values for an image mostly generates noise. If an image is meaningless, then it is not private. At the same time, to form meaningful contents like the digital one, there exist some constraints over pixel values. We call these constraints the perceptual constraints, and they scope the contents of media data, which are the privacy in the context of cell channel analysis for media software. To better understand the perceptual constraints, here I show an intuitive example. Let's imagine that we simplify the digital one as a segment, and we then project it onto the polar coordinate. To represent a segment in the polar coordinate, we only need two dimensions, namely the length row and the rotation angle delta. In that sense, if we want to reconstruct a simplified digital one, we no longer need to recover all 900 pixel values. Instead, we only need to recover its length and the rotation angle. The same conclusion also holds for real images like face photos. Here we project some face photos onto a two-dimensional manifold using our framework. While there are only two dimensions, they can distinguish different faces and are correlated with face color and face orientations. In practice, we find that about 100 dimensions are enough for face photos, regardless of the image size. Now, let's rethink cell channel analysis of media software under the view of manifold. In fact, reconstructing media data from cell channels can be viewed as a domain transformation from the cell channel domain to the media data domain. Unlike conventional attacks that recover data bytes, we focus on perceptual contents of media data, which can be represented using much lower dimensions. More specifically, we first encode the privacy from a set channel trace into a latent representation, and then decode this latent representation as one media data instance. The high-level overview of our framework is illustrated using this figure, which mainly has two components, an encoder and a decoder. The encoder takes set channels logged using off-the-shelf methods as inputs 
and the decoder outputs a private media data. The decoder is specifically designed for each type of media data. In our scenario, we consider images, audios, and text. Let's first see the image decoder. Since pixel values are floating point numbers, images are continuous. Following the standard approach, we use a convolutional neural network as the image decoder. The private image can be generated by upsampling progressively. Similar to images, audios are also continuous. However, it's challenging to generate audios in their raw formats. To eliminate this hurdle, we use an image representation of audios. More specifically, an audio can be represented using its log amplitude of mouse spectrum, and the conversion is lossless. Therefore, we can reconstruct audios from set channels following the same method as for images. Textual data, namely sentences, are quite different with images and audios. Since there is no intermediate word, a sentence is a sequence of discrete words. Accordingly, the lower dimensional manifold for textual data primarily encodes its word dependency. Therefore, we explore to reconstruct sentences using the recurrent neural network. As shown here, based on the word dependency, a sentence can be reconstructed by iteratively predicting the next word. Here we present some face photos reconstructed using our approach. The first and the third rows are reconstructed images. The second and the fourth rows are the corresponding private inputs. The reconstructed images are of high quality and mostly consistent with the private inputs. For instance, the reconstructed images and the private inputs have the same gender, face color, orientation, and the facial expressions. This page shows some chest X-ray images. The reconstructed images are also highly consistent with the user private input. Here we show the log mouse spectrum of reconstructed audios and the user private audios. Each audio records a one-second human sound seen one digit. This is the input audio. One. This is the reconstructed audio. One. This is the input audio. Three. This is a reconstructed audio. Three. This is the input audio. Six. This is a reconstructed audio. Six. This page shows the reconstructed sentences and the private inputs. We mark the inconsistent words. We note that most of the words are correctly recovered. Let's see how we localize that channel leaks in media software. In the rest of this presentation, I will use image as an example, whose conclusion can be extended to other media data directly. Actually, the localization can be done by answering the question, which records contribute most to reconstructing the image? More specifically, we use the Intel pin to collect cell channel traces. At the same time, we log the corresponding instruction of each cell channel record. As a result, the vulnerable program points can be localized by mapping the most important records back to their instructions. We use neural attention to identify cell channel records that contribute most to reconstructing the image. The neural attention assigns each record an attention weight. By finding the records that have the highest attention weights, we can identify the most important ones for reconstructing the image. Here we show a code snippet of the vulnerable program point in libgpg. In fact, we rediscover all cell channel leaks exploited in previous works and disclose many new vulnerabilities. Most of them are from the minimum code unit modules, the inverse discrete cosine transformation modules, and other image transformation and output dumping routines. Before showing our mitigation scheme, let's first see the difference between the focus of media software and our attack. Generally, media software precise data bytes, for example, the pixel value. In contrast, 
Our attack focuses on the perceptions of media data, such as facial attributes. So our intuition is that we can blind the perceptions of media data. Therefore, the functionality of media software will not be affected, and we can hide the perceptions of private media data. We first randomly select one universal mask and process it using the media software P. Let's denote the output as P mask. Here we require that the mask must be perceptually correlated to the private inputs. For example, both the private input and the mask are face photos. We then blind the private input by adding it with the mask. We require that the weight of mask must be much larger than the weight of private input, such that the mask can dominate the perceptions of blended input. When processing the blended input using the media software, the attacker can no longer obtain the private input because the reconstructed media data mostly retain the perception of the mask. However, the normal user can have the desired output by subtracting P mask from P blended. In practice, the add and subtract operations are implemented as the data byte addition and subtraction for images and audios. For sentences, the add operation is implemented as inserting words. Because words are discrete and the textual manifold primarily encodes word dependency, repeatedly inserting words can break the word dependency and thus mitigate our attack. Here I present some mitigation results of our perception blending. The reconstructed images of the attacker mostly retain the perceptions of the mask. In contrast, Normal users can recover the perceptions of private inputs with negligible loss. Thank you for listening.